Hi, my name is Stephen Haig with MTS Systems Corporation. Today I'm going to spend some time talking to you about heavy truck durability testing in the laboratory. A very common a product for heavy truck development and vehicle development in general is what we call a mast, a multi-axial shaker table. In this case we've got, for example, cooling systems. Here we've got a whole row of them being tested together. This is just the cooling system, including part of the chassis, for example. We can do durability testing, performance evaluation, noise and vibration testing. Many different kinds of, of things are mounted on a truck are subject to vibration environment. We can test them at the subcomponent level all the way up to full components. This is an example of a seat test. In this case, the system is is what we call human rated. We can put a real person in here and the system detects what's going on. There's various preventions to keep from putting excessive uh, vibration or impacts into the operator. It keeps track of the vibration that he's experienced and it stops him from being able to see any more testing once he's experienced his daily exposure. Um, we can put a dumb instrumented dummy in here and measure the response. We can use ride comfort evaluation, for example, to evaluate the accuracy of the seat isolation. And because we have a multi-axial excitation, we can excite the seat in many different directions. We can study specific aspects of ride comfort that are directionally sensitive. RPC includes a tool for ride comfort analysis. We can compare the vibrations to various standards like the ISO 2631 or the ISO 7096. We also have NASA standards we can compare to. This is an example from one of MTS's customers. It was done, presented at an RPC users group meeting with commercial vehicle group. They're a major manufacturer of truck seats. They've been using their mass table and the ride comfort software to very carefully evaluate the dynamics of the seat and how it acts on the driver comfort. We've got X and Y and we've got Z and of course also three degrees of freedom to worry about. And they each have different dynamics and different isolation capabilities. As we see here, harm rest is different than it is in the back center of the back. By using these engineering tools, we can get very accurate empirical data to show how much is the contribution to the comfort and discomfort for each direction at each point at each frequency. That allows us to directly troubleshoot the source and the transmission and go directly to a better ride. They, he concluded his remarks with ride comfort tool can be a great tool for benchmark studies especially when you have several ass seats to compare. Very easy metric to conduct seat comfort comparisons. Information in split bands, pitch, roll, and yaw can be obtained. Ride Comfort also supports the NASA model. FRF-based FRF analysis is very detailed, can be used for troubleshooting specific designs. And more filters can be created. The filters are what shapes things the way a human body does. You can shape those however you want within the Ride Comfort tool. Some customers like to extend it out, for example, for higher quality ride for luxury vehicles and things like that. So those capabilities all exist there. Another application of a mass system is in exhaust testing. This is an example of the MTS 35310 500 hertz 6 degree of freedom shaker table. In this case we're using the shaker table to simulate engine vibration doing a flex and exhaust uh, system test. You see here the engine motion being reproduced by the high frequency table and then you see what we call hanger point actuators doing the frame motions that excite the rest of the exhaust system. Once it was installed at the customer's site, they applied hot gas to the exhaust system to keep it at a high temperature to simulate the overall fatigue damage environment of a real operating exhaust. This is what we call a 323 heavy duty mast, two and a half by two meter table, payload up to 1600 kilograms, six degrees of freedom to 50 hertz, very commonly used for truck development, truck engine mounts, systems. Uh, here we've got a, a bus. Here we've got a sprayer where they're studying the accuracy of the spray, spray patterns when the sprayer gets disturbed by the soils. A lot of different applications. Cooling system, shake tests, many, many, many. We know the cooling system is a complex system subject to vibration and so as many of these kind of tests are run. Engine mounting systems are often run on these tables. The idea is it's inertially reacted, meaning the engine mass sitting on its mounting system is what causes the loading based on frame motion. So the table reproduces frame motion 
and the engine provides the inertial forces on the loading system. The advantages are we get properly phased simultaneous loads on all the components, everything moves correctly, maintains representative frequency representation, we get both free re resonant responses and forced responses. It's a good test of subsystem durability and performance. Tends, if it's well designed, it's representative of correlated customer usage. And it tests the complete mounting system as a unit altogether. All the mounts work together and in this way we study their interaction. This is a little heavier duty table. This has only one ton specimen, but up to six Gs in operation and six degrees of freedom to 100 hertz. Here we've got a slightly bigger table. Again, a three ton specimen, 10 to 12 Gs up to 100 hertz. This is focused on developing cabins and cooling systems and stuff for industrial equipment for construction. This is an example of a cab shake system. Cab shake systems are very common in the heavy truck business, in the off-road industry, construction, agricultural. Cabin is a real complete system that needs to be tested, developed, on, and, can, and ideally it's developed on its own in the laboratory. There tends to be seven control channels. We get four vertical actuators to control bounce, roll, pitch, and twist. They provide the primary excitation to the cabin. But we also have three horizontal actuators, lateral, longitudinal, and yaw. Their function is to reproduce the damping that's missing from this test in the laboratory. In the real world, the truck is a, has a chassis with springs and bushings and rolling tires. And as the cabin rocks back and forth, energy is dissipated through the rolling tires and through the springs and things. And the damping, it provides damping to the roll motion of the cabin. If we remove that damping element, the vertical input, particularly roll from the road, causes the cabin to get excessive roll response and we get damage that's not realistic compared to the road. When we put the horizontal actuators in and produce the real accelerations that were recorded on the road, the damping, horizontal damping, re-enters the test and the response of the cabin is realistic and we get good quality data. So it's not always the primary excitation, it's the only thing that's important. Sometimes we need these parasitic damping paths to, to take load away as part of the boundary conditions. So boundary conditions are critical when we're doing a component level test, such as this one. Here's a complete chassis shake system that's focused on doing cabin tests or anything else mounted on the chassis. Fuel tanks, uh, battery boxes, things, fairings, fenders, other things can be tested on this chassis. We can either shake it through a real suspension system or we can put dummy axles in place and we can just shake the chassis to get the vibrations of the frame realistically reproduced. When the uh, CAFR rules for construction equipment moved up to the next level, the construction manufacturers had to add diesel fuel scrubbers to the exhaust systems on their equipment. Well, those are very large and they're very heavy and there wasn't space in the chassis to fit them in. So most of the construction manufacturers had to redesign their chassis to accommodate these scrubbing systems. In order to do that in a timely manner, this customer bought a large shake table that we see here and they put each chassis system, they removed the drive systems and things that they're not specifically testing to reduce the mass and complexity, and they put the assembled chassis up here with the guardrails, the doors, the windows, the stairs, everything, the outlying things that are on here, and then you can do a shake test with real data that's recorded from a vehicle of this type operating in the field. It could be a tracked vehicle, it could be a tired vehicle, they have very different characteristics. And we can do a vibration test to test these things that really you can't test in the computer. You don't know the load path, you don't know the damping, you don't know how much energy is transmitted. And so this is a very realistic test to find your weak points and improve them very early in the development system. That system was able to test up to an 8 ton specimen, up to 10 G's, up to 50 hertz for 6 degrees of freedom. This one is a little bigger yet. It's capable of testing up to a 24 ton specimen. It was focused on testing excavators, including the counterbalances. The counterbalances apparently sometimes fall off in the field, which can cause some nasty problems. So they wanted to make sure to t vibration test those accurately in the laboratory. The specimen can be up to 24 tons. We tested up to 6 Gs, up to 50 hertz, and 6 degrees of freedom. 
And you see these airbag system underneath here is providing what we call static support. It supports the 24 ton specimen weight and the table weight, so the hydraulic system only does the dynamic load. It reduces the flow demand by having the air pressure support the static load.